Hey everyone, Chris here with High Seas Cruising and today we are at the Naval Museum here at Sea Wolf Park in Galveston, Texas. We're going to take a tour of the two ships here on site and we're going to start with the USS Cavella. She is a World War II submarine, so let's get right into it. You know, these submarines always seem super, super tiny. And they are pretty small on the inside, but I mean, they seem pretty big just walking around up here on the top deck. But we're gonna go head down into the forward hatch here. All right, it's definitely a steep descent. And we are here in the forward torpedo room. Four torpedo tubes, eight reloader skids, bunks for 12 men slept in here, the forward escape trunk, the torpedo loading hatch. Can't believe that now that we're inside, it's definitely a lot smaller. And 12 people slept in this space right here. And of course, at the moment, they only have three replica torpedoes in here. I don't know how many spares she carried, but it definitely had to be tight. Space for someone to go down in there. The setting device for the torpedoes. That's where you would open the watertight doors and the actual button to fire the torpedoes. To vent the tubes. <laughs> A lot of valves. I think you really had to know what you were doing in here. Pretty sure if I started messing with all this stuff, I might mess something up. This would have been the head or the toilet. Sink. Oh, correction, so that's the officer's head. Officers usually get the nicer stuff, and that one's for the officers. I'd hate to see where the enlisted had to go. But let's keep moving forward. We got the galley the officer's wardroom. Now this is officer's quarters for the gunnery officer, the supply officer, the navigator. Now this is definitely tight quarters in here. So there's four people that sleep in this, I mean, this tiny, tiny room. And if you can see, I'm backed all the way into the corner of this room and 
I mean, I can just reach out and touch the other side and pretty much almost put my shoulder on the other side. There is not a lot of space in here. And I said it looked big up top. I stand corrected once we are inside. Still the officer's wardroom. All right, moving forward. This here was would have been the captain's quarters. We can't actually get in there. It's plexiglassed over, but we'll take the best look we can. I mean, even for the captain, he really did not have much room. He's got a sink and a small desk in there. But I guess at least he has the room to himself. This is the navigator's quarters. And this is the chief petty officer's quarters. And this one we can come into here. So it looks like there is a bunk possibly missing, but there's one, two, three, four bunks in here as is. I mean, this bottom one down here is pretty much sleeping on the ground. One sink. Not much else in here. Got a mirror. But again, really tight quarters for three people. I'm assuming one, you know, one or two of them were on duty at all times. Otherwise, nobody would fit in there. All right, this is the ship's office. Space is definitely at a premium here on a World War II submarine. We're gonna keep moving forward. All right, so this will be the control room. We have the auxiliary gyro compasses, the main compass here. This looks like, I think they called it the, the valve board or the controls the ballast, but like the watertight board, hole opening indicator panel. The vents to open different manifolds and let water in, pump water out around the ship. Emergency steering. We got the trim manifold. Okay, this is the stern planes diving position. And this is the forward planes diving position. You got your depth gauges. Hull pressure, speed, rudder indicators. Up this, there's here. Now this hatch is closed, so of course we cannot get up there. But that's to the bridge, the periscope, and the attack center. We've got another deck below us that we can't get into. I'm not sure what's down there. But these are all switches, electrical boards, valve control, air manifolds, air banks. I'd be curious to know, how noisy was it in this ship? I mean, we haven't even seen the engines or anything like that yet. I know when it's underwater, it runs on electric, but above water, it's diesel. Okay, here's a garbage disposal. Kind of think that would be near closer to the galley, but nope, it's not. We got the radio room. All right, we're going to keep moving forward here. Oh, I, I went down and said, like, you know, whole crap. 
All right, so this is the cruise mess. So just in case you think your kitchen at home is small, take a look at this one. Imagine if you had this in your house and this is all you had the room to work with. No, no, you did. A true uh, galley kitchen. This is where that term starts from is the galley kitchen. Gotcha. And so about, they got to cook three meals a day and mid rats. (laughs) And uh, they do it from a kitchen like this. Yeah, Yeah, that is a small kitchen. I want to tell you it's the best food in the world. (laughs) Is it? (laughs) Even better on the big ships. Better. Better. Really? Hey, when I was on the. Swordfish, we ate two big lobsters every Friday. Two big ones. The wow. lobster truck would pull up, and I ate two big ones. And we'd, <laughs> we'd have steak night, uh, spaghetti night, or oh, wow. Italian That'd night. Be good. And but every Friday was lobster night, steak. <laughs> <laughs> so was the swordfish a diesel electric oh, similar no, to no, this one? No, no, no. It was a fast stack. It's nickel. Oh, okay. Los Angeles. Uh, see that? Virginia. I've been on it. Oh, Virginia class. Yeah. Gotcha. I've been on this one, and uh, I took my two sons on it. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I was a torpedo one. I had two best jobs. I drove the submarine, and I was a torpedo one. Uh, you all know, like they fly airplanes? That's what I did. I sit at the helm. All right. Yeah, we sit here. So this is this is the cruise mess, correct? Yeah. You, you, you said three, six, twelve, eighteen. 24 and you have 100 men on the ship, so you go with four different every 30 minutes. You come in, and the food is already on the table. It's not like you go up there and say, I want this. They put the like beans, potatoes, steak, whatever you want to eat, and you you have the six plates already out, and you see the coffee cups. So you do it like family style? Yeah. Okay, I did not know that. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's neat. And as soon as the bowl is empty, it's the place. And so the most cooks are really good. That's a tough job on the submarine. Now, a hundred men on this ship, it looks like a tough job, period. I mean, they look like they're packed in here like sardines. Well, you hot rat. So if you're not on duty, you're sleeping. So they're bunk sharing. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And you share a lot of too. I mean, you only got one shower a month. You learn how to take a bird bath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I got to tell you, I spent 64 days uh, in North Vietnam on one of these, picking up pilots where they got shot down. And uh, I, I'm 100% disabled from that, from the Navy SEALs, because they'd rescue pilots at night when they got shot down over North Vietnam. So this is a submarine that was rescuing pilots in North Vietnam. This actual submarine? Uh, no, this was the World War II. Okay. One just like this. I was on 302, one of the last ones built. Gotcha, okay. And so we sent us up the river to rescue pilots with the Navy SEALs. Awesome. And then I went through PLDC with the Army Rangers. <laughs> so I told my son, I don't want to hear any bullshit about no sleep and hiking. <laughs> He went into the infantry on Friday, especially when he got assigned to Mountain Division. Yeah, so how many sleep in this one room? One, two, Ooh, three, four, sleep. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. You sleep in three, uh, three, three. I just meant how many actually could sleep in here all at one time. Oh yeah. Oh, you don't see them over here too. They took some of them out. So you have three right now over I see there. About thirty-one. See, you can see that one there. You got, you got three over there. Well, that three down here. Now here's where you take the bird bath. Uh, here's the hardest part of the submarine right here. Getting through them little doorways. Oh man, this, this is super tiny in here. Okay, so here's the shower. Okay, and this is where he was talking about you only get to shower like once a month, they said on board one of these submarines. In this tiny, tiny little space. Then you turn around and you got two sinks and some cabinets in here and not much else. I mean, and the ceiling is, I mean, right here above our heads. It is definitely a tight fit in here. 
All right, one more knee knocker. See, these, these charge uh, the batteries. You don't see the batteries, but they got about uh, 120 batteries that are about 12 foot tall. And, and, and during the day, uh, I mean, during the night, you're charging the batteries. So when you surface during the day, you're running on batteries. So the engines, at night you're running on the engines, charging the batteries. And in the daytime, you're running on the batteries. And, uh, but you don't see the batteries. There's about 120 of them. That's why, that's why under here, you don't see them. You know the number one danger of something like this? Fire. Well, yeah, that, that makes sense because there's not a lot of oxygen in here and the fire will eat that up quick. Alright, so now we are in the forward engine room. Looks like they got a machine shop in here as well. He just died, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, he just. He went to the. He went to. He went on the first patrol on the submarine. I'll show you a little picture of him real quick. This guy was something else, man. You know. Would they put him in the old folks' home, you know, or when they dinner with him every Friday night? And he could tell you some stories about I, oh diesel outboard exhaust Harvard valve. Night. Sir, what's that? Oh, John was there at Pearl Harbor the day they attacked my friend, and uh, he was on a submarine like this on Pearl Harbor the day they were attacked, and he was up topside, and I said, John, what were you thinking? When you saw his bombs, he says, I was just looking for a place to hide. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Oh, he was something. I love that man, though. He was something else. I mean, because he actually made patrols on this. So he made the very first patrol on it. And he got, they were attacked by uh, the Japanese bombers. And they went down. He says, man, it was, it was scary. But, uh, <laughs> I don't take pictures of this, man, because I like to forget this part of it. <laughs> it got hot. I, I slept back there sometimes, and my rack was back there, and I'd have to come through this room about four or five times, and you just sweat. And the guys that work in here, they have to drink so much water, and they just sweat to death. I almost said they did. Now, during the day, it wasn't so bad, because they were running on batteries. Now the air comes in, they suck the air in here, and they put it out through the snorkel. You have a, uh, not a snorkel, but they have an exhaust mask on the top of the submarine. Okay, to pull the diesel fumes out? Yeah, and pull all the air and everything out. And so, uh, so they have an uh, exhaust up there, it's, it's called a snorkel exhaust. He did, that's what he did, he worked on these. Main engine number four, 16 cylinders, 1,534 horsepower. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 1,100 kilowatt generator. They're charging the batteries, and the, sn and the, and the snorkel went below the water and sucked the air from inside the submarine. And it pulled it out of your ears. So we, you knew when, they, when the snorkel went below the water because it started sucking the water, the air out of out of the submarine, and you could go up to six inches of air being sucked out, and then it shut there, shuts everything down. Wow! So, oh, it got my ears. <laughs> But the guys you served with were really good. So you were good. They, they had to be to be in these oh, things. Yeah. I loved it though. I mean, you know, in Vietnam it wasn't fun, but not 100%, but, you know, it's a, the guys came back when they rescued them, they were dead, shot up, and all that. So you appreciate life pretty quick. Ah, y'all getting the fun part of the submarine, man. <laughs> All right, so that is the second engine room. Now we're going to move forward. 
This is the electric part. We control all electricity, the battery, and uh, the speed, the submarine. Now, you remember the control room? Mm hmm. Okay, where the guys had all those instruments? They actually, this control from back here. It is really it's tight through here. Yeah, you can't be a big person in here. You see, like if he says all head two thirds, you ring this up all head two thirds and you make the adjustments on here. These are the batteries. See? This is Frankenstein's Yeah. Yeah, these are old batteries and uh, you have all the amps. This is, they control the batteries. And like you control the speed, the captain says all two thirds. And they relay back here all two thirds on the battery or all two thirds on the engines. You know, it's all done from back here. Brassy air system yeah. going through. And you can see the depth of the submarine, you know. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the starboard shell. Oh, it's, yeah, this one had two screws on it. Yeah, these are old General Electric engines. And... Oh, here's what else that man. This is, ah, a lid back here. All right, aft this torpedo is, room. This is where I slept. Right here. Wow. In Vietnam, this is where I slept. This is my own rack. Now, one time I slept up here in a four torpedo room. I was sleeping next to a nuclear warhead. I had a nuclear torpedo, and here's a nuclear warhead, and here's my head. Wow. Mark 45 torpedo. How, how, well is, how well do you sleep at night sleeping next to a nuclear torpedo? Probably just as good, right? Yeah, just as good. You don't <laughs> worry about it. They're big quick. Them, I fired all these weapons. I shot every one of them. I fired over 80 torpedoes. Wow. In practice, I can't tell you what I've done to real. <laughs> shot 80 of them in practice. Yeah, you shoot those torpedoes, so we try it real quick. Okay. You put the torpedo in there and you look it up. You see those things that uh, that gold thing over here, you look it up for that little wire. Thing. Sixty days out there, I didn't know where I was at. You just do your job, you know? Yeah. Now then I was a torpedo and I wasn't driving the submarine. No. You've done it all. Oh, I've had this. I've rode every type of submarine there is. Deal with it. <laughs> That's exactly. That's the submarine model. Deal with it. Now I can go to San Antonio and see my rest of my family. Awesome. That's where we just came from. Where? Um, We're actually in Seguin, but San Antonio area. Oh, my, my niece lives in Seguin. Oh, okay. So you know there. Oh, yeah. They used to run that racetrack there. Yeah. In fact, they live next to the end of the racetrack. His name is John Buchanan. Come on. Want to get hot in here? Come on, you should come in. That one's got very hot right now. That had to have been one of the best ship tours I've ever had like that. Yes. I love it when you can get somebody on the ship who is knowledgeable, who's been there, knows people that have been there, and, you know, can actually explain a lot more about what it was really like than just what you read or you see in movies and TV. It makes the experience a thousand times better. All right, we're gonna move to the bow of the ship up here and just take a quick look at it before we go on the destroyer. Mark 18 torpedo.